Today I want to give you a tour of the uh, my workbench, everything that I use when I grind pens and customize the nibs of pens, uh, or work on vintage pens, do restorations. Anything I do, I do at this workbench. Um, so I just want to kind of give you an overview of the tools that I use. These are the things that I'm going to be showing you in some future videos for my cursive italic video, I'll do a stub video, needle points, and show you how I grind uh, steel and gold point nibs. So over here, I just want to show you that I have, uh, th these are Arkansas stones or uh, hard wet stones, and I use these for shaping the point of the nib. And I got these from Dan's Whetstone Company. I use these for shaping only the square point of the front of the nib. So as an example, the nib itself has the their sides obviously on each point, the left side, the right side, there's a top side, there's a bottom side. For all of those cuts, I use the Dremel. For the actual wet stone, I shape the face right here, the very face of the nib. The Dremel is too aggressive for this cut. The nib catches on it, it bounces around, and especially on steel nibs, it is pretty brittle and will crack. So I use the whetstone for, to, for grinding the face of the nib in a motion like this. So put it directly on the whetstone and draw back. I also use the whetstone for rounding the corners. The Dremel's good for making your initial cuts, they're very rough. And then when you need to round the edge, draw it back while simultaneously lifting up. And that will create your rounded edge. I'll show you a video shortly on how to actually create those rounded edges and use the whetstones appropriately. I was using this dry in a demonstration, but for an actual video, you would use it wet. It's called a whetstone, so you need to dip it in water. Um, there are oil stones out there, and I believe you can't use oil on Arkansas stones. I do not do that. I strictly use water as a lubricant, and I think it works completely fine. So after you finish your initial cuts on the whetstone, you need to polish the nib. And polishing can be accomplished through various uh, methods. I use a leather strop with the green paste compound. I don't even know what this is called. But I know that it's very common when you buy a leather strop, you rub it with the green paste and it creates a polishing compound, kind of just like this. You just rub the paste on here. And then you can take the nib and you just run it through the green paste, through various directions. And this will polish the edges of it. So the, uh, the only downside to using this method is it gets that green polishing paste all over the nib. So after you've polished it, you really need to disassemble the nib and feed and clean everything out. If that's not something you're comfortable doing, I wouldn't recommend this method. Um, you could also use Jeweler's Rouge, which I think I have a small piece of it in here. Maybe under here? Yep, here. So in one of my drawers, I have the small piece of Jeweler's Rouge. Uh, this is used by jewelers to polish gold. And you can also use it on fountain pen nibs. Just take this, take a sheet of paper, rub the rouge on the paper, and then you can write through it, and that will polish the surface of the nib. You'll have the same issue, though, that you'll need to clean that out of the nib, uh, but it's probably going to be a lot easier to clean because this is a lot powdery than the uh, polishing paste for the straw. This is more flaky and will get into all the crevices. This will rinse out with water. This won't. Now, before I bought the Arkansas stones, uh, I used, I had this polishing stone, or not polishing, this is a, um, a grinding stone that I used for cutting woodworking tools and knives. And this worked fine for me. Um, I eventually upgraded to the Arkansas stones simply because they're much smaller in size and more convenient to use. If you've already got a large stone like this, uh, by all means use it, it will work just fine. For the Dremel, you can see over here I have my uh, Dremel. This is what I use to make my rough cuts. I use primarily a grinding stone. These grinding stones I found on a website called Widget Supply. You can use actual Dremel brand stones like this one, 
Um, but I think a Dremel branch stone, something like this, is approaching $10, maybe, I'm guessing. The widget supply stones, like this, I think was $2. So you get much more better value out of ordering the off-brand stones, and they work just as well. Um, in addition to the stone, and I use these stones for side cuts. When I'm reducing nib width, I take the nib while it's in the Dremel, and uh, uh, I present the nib to the stone on the side, like this. And that will reduce the width. In addition to the stones, I have cutoff wheels. And again, I got these from Widget Supply. The cutoff wheels attach, I have one over here, already on the stem. So this will go into the Dremel like this. I don't actually use it as a cutoff wheel, I use the surface of it. So I use these for my underside and top side cuts. So while the Dremel is spinning like this, you present the nib to the down, the underside of the nib to the cutoff wheel while it's spinning to cut your underside, and then flip it over and present the top side to it, and it will cut the top side. The other things I use, my jeweler's loop. This is indispensable. I'm using this every single day. I work on pens. This is a 10x loop, and I like this one because it is attached to an eyeglass frame. I can wear this on my face and don't have to worry about stabilizing it. It constantly is in one position, and I can uh, look at nibs easily, and I don't have to worry. It, it's much easier to focus while this is stable on my face. I highly recommend one that attaches to your head in some way. This is a 10x. And honestly, 10X is more than plenty for what we need. Uh, if you try and go higher, if you think 20X or 30X is better, it's really not. And that's because when you get into those higher magnifications, it's much harder to focus on the nib that you're working with. As you get into the higher magnifications, your depth of field gets much shallower. So it's much harder to focus on the point, and you'll really just become frustrated trying to focus rather than working on the, the nib itself and seeing what you've done. I just have a polishing cloth here. I use this whenever I work with gold nibs just to give it a final polish and uh, make it just shine it up and make it stand out. Uh, over here I have some uh, flushing bulbs that I use for cleaning pens. A lot of customers sometimes will send me a pen and they're not totally clean. They still have ink residue in them. So regardless of what I receive, I always flush it out first. This is a desoldering bulb that I got from Radio Shack. It comes with a nozzle that's used for actually desoldering circuit boards. I threw the nozzle away and the bulb itself works great, especially on cartridge converters. It's a perfect size to kind of force over the back end of the feed and you can flush out the nib and feed together. Uh, for pens with narrow openings, this is a, uh, an ear syringe. You can get these at any pharmacy and they will work great with flushing pens out as well. Back here, I have my collection of brass shims. I use these for flossing the two nib tines. Um, I also use them to shape uh, shims to force in between the nib tines and spread them apart if needed. Uh, I, I wouldn't ever do that with a gold nib. I really only use the shims to spread the nib tines on steel nibs, uh, simply because they're much harder. They're uh, much more rigid material and harder to move apart, but uh, the, the brass shims really help out in that situation. Uh, but that's only secondary use. Really, they're used for flossing the nib tines. So I have various different sizes. I got this on Amazon. It goes from 0 0.001 inch, which is great for flossing, 0 0.002, which is good for starting to spread the tines, 0 0.003 for your really wet nibs if you need to move in there. And it came with 0 0.005, but I would, I would never use this. It will just sit there unused. Back here I have my uh, smoothing cloth. This is the micro mesh. I have a video on how to smooth nibs. After the cuts are done, you move on to this to smooth the, the nib itself. And back here are the mylar sheets, which you would move on to after you're done with the micro mesh. I don't really use these, honestly, but they are an option. So over here, I just wanna show you the, the where I actually do the grinding, show you my Dremel setup. I have a single speed Dremel here. And I have this uh, secured in my workbench vise. The, if you don't have a workbench vise, something like this, if you have a woodworking bench, with, usually with a, a wood vise on it, that would be great. Uh, you could attach it in and really secure it down. Uh, if you don't have this, Richard Bender's website has plans for a, like a jig that you can build out of wood and strap down your Dremel to it 
to really secure it. It's really important that you do secure your Dremel. You only want one thing to be moving while you're grinding the nibs, and that one thing is the pen. Uh, if you're really trying to, if you're trying to hold the Dremel in one hand while grinding it in the other hand, it, no one has that level of coordination. It's not going to work out. You will be unhappy with the result. It's really critical that you find some way to lock down your Dremel, make it nice and secure, so it's a stationary position. Uh, this is a single speed Dremel. It's uh, one of the cheapest ones you can get, but absolutely critical to go along with this Dremel is a floor pedal. And you can see down here that I have a floor pedal plugged into the Dremel, and this allows me to control the speed of the, uh, the rotation itself and really control the fineness of the cut. The single speed Dremels rotate at an absurdly high speed that is completely unnecessary for the level of work that we're trying to do with these fountain pen nibs. The surface area that we actually want to cut is minuscule. It's measured in millimeters. And the speed of the Dremel is so aggressive that there's no way for you to control the, the cut that you're trying to achieve. The, having a foot pedal is an absolutely critical accessory that you must have. You can't work on fountain pens without it. If you don't have a foot pedal, I would recommend uh, not even using the Dremel. Cut strictly on stones. Do it manually. And that's not very fun but it uh, will show you how to make your cuts and it will force you to appreciate the level of work that goes into shaping these nibs. Uh, using the, a Dremel without a foot pedal is just a recipe for destroying nibs. You'll ruin everything. So it, secure your Dremel, get a foot pedal, and uh, that, that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple setup. So that, that is my workshop in a whirlwind tour. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll see you later.